In January, I underwent major abdominal surgery in London, and at the time, it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. Breaking news this morning, the Princess of Wales has announced she's receiving treatment. She's in a fight for her life against cancer. It was a seismic shock. My medical team advised that I should undergo a course of preventative chemotherapy, and I'm now in the early stages of that treatment. This is a woman who is confronting a diagnosis that is very scary for anyone. It's really unprecedented times. Taxi drivers have told me they had to stop driving because they were crying. Can you imagine telling your three young children that this is what you're facing? It has taken us time to explain everything to George, Charlotte and Louis to reassure them that I'm going to be OK. The royal family is still reeling from King Charles's cancer diagnosis as well. We begin with breaking news and Buckingham Palace has just released a statement. King Charles III has been diagnosed with cancer. Coming so early in his reign it does seem particularly cruel. The Queen, Camilla, and Prince William are holding the fort. Harry and William's relationship is incredibly fractured. Very damaging to the royal family. The royals have never looked more vulnerable. The world is used to seeing Princess Kate, a vibrant, healthy and strong woman, a royal role model to millions. And a figure who's dedicated her life to service and helping others. But now she is in need of help facing her own battles against cancer at the age of 42. This, of course, came as a huge shock and William and I have been doing everything we can to process and manage this privately for the sake of our young family. A rare and emotional moment, the crown and the princess vulnerable, sharing her pain. It was poignant, it was intimate, but also there was a frailty that came through that made it at times quite difficult to watch. So they're not going to talk about what kind of cancer the Princess of Wales had. They're not going to talk about her prognosis. I think they've gone pretty far in terms of transparency uh, now. The Princess of Wales had not been seen on official engagement since Christmas Day, here pictured on a walk with other members of the royal family at Sandringham, happy and smiling. But on January 16, Kate was admitted to hospital for abdominal surgery, discharged 13 days later to return home to Windsor, the palace only saying she was making good progress. It's fair to say the past few weeks have had a rather medical focus. Six weeks later and the first clue of something more serious, Prince William mysteriously pulling out of his godfather's memorial service at short notice, an occasion he would never normally miss. We now know why his wife diagnosed with cancer. We hope that you'll understand that as a family, we now need some time, space and privacy while I complete my treatment. My work has always brought me a deep sense of joy and I look forward to being back when I'm able. But for now, I must focus on making a full recovery. The unprecedented royal video ending a global frenzy of speculation. Well, the first official photograph of Princess Kate has been released this morning since she underwent surgery in January. The Princess of Wales was pictured alongside her three children in a photo that was taken by Prince William last week. The image posted to social media on Mother's Day. But the image backfired spectacularly when leading global photo agencies issued a kill notice. The major press agencies right around the world have pulled that Mother's Day photo, you know, saying it's been manipulated at the source. The doctored photograph was certainly a misstep and uh, the kill notices issued by the picture agencies suddenly propelled this into the mainstream media, uh, onto the front pages, and it provoked a huge furore here. 
there had to be a response to what one can only say was uh, a hysterical worldwide interest in her health. I think it got increasingly difficult for her to hear or see the incredibly rude comments that people were throwing at her. It was all perhaps as if we, we owned her, every bit of her, and she had to do what we want. Official photos of the royal family always gets plenty of attention, but not like this. I don't care about those things, but I the don't. question to me is why did, why did Kate apparently care enough to experiment with photo editing? What is exactly being cleaned up? It's hard to imagine the personal agony the Princess of Wales was suffering as a wife and mother dealing with a cancer diagnosis and watching privately as her absence from public life became the new sport for wild rumours and at times vile and hurtful accusations. Well now, internet sleuths are guessing that Kate's absence may be related to her husband and the future King of England, William, having an affair. Crazy rumors about what's been happening with her. Where is she? Where is she not? Dude, that's, that's her body double. She's you know, the royals have body doubles, y'all. It is a safety precaution, <laughs> President. But at this point, it may be nice for her to at least poke her head it's out of a window or something. Kate Gate polarized the internet, as did the princess's statement. Was this the dutiful wife unfairly taking the blame, saying she wanted to express my apologies? I was surprised that the Princess of Wales wanted to you know, issue this confession, this apology for editing the photo. One may have thought that the palace would have tried to take responsibility for it. They can work with the broadcast media. Yes, they can work with the print media. But when it comes to social media, they have no control. Once the cancer diagnosis was announced, the tide turned. The princess's critics apologised. I'm guilty of having gotten into the fun of where's Kate and sort of thinking it's funny and sharing the memes. I oh. went down this crazy rabbit hole, thank you to my co-host and to myself. I have to take blame for that. A lot of my jokes have upset people in the past, and I'm sure some of my jokes will upset people in the future. I do not make light of somebody else's tragedy. It's a very interesting exercise in public relations and how you may uh, operate going forward. Of course, we now live in a 24-7 news cycle and waiting, being uncertain, uh, not having information is, is not how we now you know, have learned to operate. It's not just Kate's health worries, as the princess's confession shocked the world, for the first time a realisation of the immense personal pain and pressure being suffered by William, his wife and his father, both fighting cancer. Learning that the king wasn't very well, I think, was quite jarring for a huge number of people. But at the same time, his willingness to be so open about his diagnosis has had an extraordinary knock-on effect. And it really speaks to the enduring fascination with the British royals, but also how people look to them to inform elements of their own life. So the fact that the king and the princess have spoken so openly about it, it shows you a very different monarchy. And as far as what's going on behind the scenes, it'll be very much business as usual. There's still the king's still current engagements. Catherine's obviously taking some time, quite rightly, out. Uh, the king will also be taking time out, but it will be business as usual. And th that's the thing about the organisation. It just whatever's thrown at it, it just carries on. It still carries on. For Charles, his strength in the adversity of that shattering diagnosis came not from estranged son Harry, but from his rock, his eldest son William and Camilla. Prince William has an awful lot on his plate. He's got a, his father's cancer to deal with, his wife's cancer, three young children, and obviously his royal duties as well. Obviously he lost his mother at a young age, his father's now cancer, his wife's got cancer, he's got a young family. He's very much carrying on as normal, but it's difficult because he's almost going to have to step up. I think it's safe to say it's quite a stressful time for him. 
I think the king is getting the majority of his support from his wife, Queen Camilla. She has been extraordinary. This is not a role for which, that comes easily to her, uh, but she has jumped in head first. We have to remember she is well into her 70s. Uh, she probably, given half a chance, would be at home gardening and spending time with her grandchildren, reading. We know she's a prolific reader, but as the wife of the king, she recognizes what her responsibility is and she has embraced it and in turn, the British public has embraced her. It's been an absolutely incredible turnaround from uh, you know, just 10, 20 years ago when public opinion still wasn't on her side. But I think people see that she's a, a grafter, she's rolled her sleeves up. Camilla, wearing Queen Elizabeth's brooches, represented her husband at the Easter Maundy Day service. The King told to stay home by doctors, instead issuing a pre-recorded audio message. It is for me a great sadness that I cannot be with you all today. The Maundy service has a very special place in my heart. We need and benefit greatly from those who extend the hand of friendship to us, especially in a time of need. For the King, it started on January 17. He was treated for an enlarged prostate. Weeks later, the palace confirmed the monarch had cancer. Breaking news from the United Kingdom. Buckingham Palace has this morning announced King Charles has been diagnosed with a form of cancer. In recent weeks, I have been most deeply touched by your wonderfully kind and thoughtful good wishes for my health. And in return, can only continue to serve you to the best of my ability throughout the Commonwealth. My belief in our shared endeavors and in the potential of our people remains as sure and strong as it has ever been. It was a cruel blow for Charles, still not even a year into his reign as king, a role he'd waited his entire life for. He was the longest serving heir apparent in British history up until his accession. He did tremendous things in his time as Prince of Wales, things for which he will long be remembered. He has been very, very cautious, very strategic, very respectful in, in terms of taking over that role from his mother. Queen Elizabeth, his inspiring mother, an impossible act to follow, a steadying influence through the decades, keeping the family and Commonwealth together. death was the end of the Elizabethan era and the start of a new one with Charles as king. He's crowning a global event as he became the oldest living monarch to take the throne at the age of 74. God save the king! But not even 12 months later, his reign still in its infancy, the new king facing a personal crisis in the full glare of public scrutiny. The royal household under pressure like never before. Coming so early in his reign as well does seem particularly cruel. Now he's starting to really get into the role, making it his own, and in a sense he's been sidelined. But I think there's been tremendous sympathy from people across the UK. They feel terribly for what it is that he's going through. We're missing the two big stars of the show, the King and the Princess of Wales, and I think their absence is being felt acutely indeed. There's no question, however, that in the show short term, this puts tremendous pressure on the senior royals who are carrying out royal duties, on Queen Camilla, who has been doing a good deal, and most particularly on Prince William. The monarchy is in a very, a, a very interesting place that it's not been in, in a long, long time. There's been many crises over the centuries and years, 
uh, they will get through this. It's just, it's just an absolute car crash. Everything that's happened to them in the last five years is, is extraordinary. It's really unprecedented times. This is definitely unprecedented times where the future is completely uncertain as to how it's going to pan out, sadly. How much does the palace need Princess Kate back in action? We know that she's a very popular member of the royal family. The public love her. How big of an asset is she? Princess Kate is the jewel in the crown of the royal family. Let me put it this way. I think William alone obviously carries a good deal of weight, but I think when he was with Catherine, they act as a couple, they interact so well. With the King and Princess of Wales now both battling cancer, William became the primary figurehead for the House of Windsor. But in this crisis, there was no brother, no Harry for him to lean on and share his personal pain. The question the world's now asking, can the bond between brothers ever be rebuilt. Once brothers in arms. Sons of the most famous woman in the world. Through good times. And through tragedy. The brothers so close with an unbreakable bond as the boys became men. Outside. Captain Harry Wales risking his life serving his country in Afghanistan. This was an extraordinary man. He has done amazing things. He fought for his country. He was a natural raconteur and, and a, you know, a natural human person that we, that we connected with. The Invictus Games is a brilliant idea that has executed really well. The Duke of Cambridge saving lives as an air ambulance pilot back home. And when romance called, they remained side by side. At William and Kate's fairy tale wedding in 2011. Come on, come on. And again, seven years later, for the union of Harry and Meghan. We loved it because we loved him. We wanted him to be happy. You know, this, this sort of troubled soul who'd walked behind his mother's coffin at the age of 12, you know, really tender. Uh, you know, there's not a person alive that doesn't look at those images and feel for him. And then, of course, he's found this wonderful bride who seems perfect for him. You know, she's a go-getter. She's been on the world stage herself. Their interests seem really aligned. And it looked so hopeful and so modern and so progressive. And it just went so badly wrong so quickly. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle will no longer go by his and her royal highness. They say they intend to step back as senior members of the royal family. But this is much more than that. They're not just stepping back. They are stepping away entirely from royal life. Megxit was astonishing. It was astonishing because of its speed, the delivery of the announcements around it. There was no consideration, no deep thinking. It was, it was how Harry and Meghan operate. The way that I saw it was there is a way of doing things, but for us, for this union mm. and the specifics around her race, there was an opportunity, many opportunities, for my family to show some public support. And also concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born. What? It was a public betrayal going nuclear. Your relationship with your father? Is he taking your calls now? Yeah, 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 he is. Um, there's a lot to work through there. You know, I, I feel really let down. My father and my brother, they are trapped. <laughs> they don't get to leave. 
and I have huge compassion for that. The interview, the memoir, the audiobook, the family's secrets laid painfully bare. It was terrifying to have my brother um, scream and shout at me and my father say things that just simply weren't true and, and my grandmother, you know, quietly sit there and, and sort of take it all in. When I was around them, they were two very close friends and it saddens me to think that that's gone. The family does need to pull together, blood is thicker than water, and they do need to be there to support each other. And whatever's happened in the past, they've almost got to kind of close the doors on the past and look to the future. Within the royal inner circle, it was an astonishing fall from grace. They were unhappy in this role. Secondly, they seemed very ill-fitted for it. And considering what happened subsequently to them stepping down as senior working royals, you had immensely damaging interviews on Oprah, the Harry and Meghan documentary on Netflix, Harry's memoir Spare and the interviews uh, he gave to promote it. I mean, these were very damaging to the royal family. Harry and Meghan were now out in the cold. At the Queen's funeral, demoted to second row seats. At the coronation, alone Harry now on the third row, obscured by Princess Anne's feathered cap. Surely this was no coincidence. He said disgusting things of the royal family. He left in 2020 and it got worse and worse his interview with Oprah Winfrey, and also his spare that he wrote, where he was incredibly unpleasant about them, told lots of lies. As 2023 became 2024, Harry watched from his adopted home in California as first his father, then his sister-in-law were cruelly diagnosed with cancer. But any hopes that through adversity would come reconciliation were quickly dashed. Harry and William's relationship is incredibly fractured, to put it mildly, and I don't think that there's any way back for it, certainly in the, not in the near future. Certainly, there is absolutely no love lost between the brothers. In a sign of just how fractured relations are between Prince Harry and the royal family, the wayward son only found out about Princess Catherine's cancer diagnosis on television at the same time as the rest of the world. But you can see from the British royal family's point of view why there would be a reluctance to say anything because they don't know where it's going to end up. Will it be shared in a podcast? Will it end up in a magazine interview? Uh, will it be in another documentary? Will it be in another book? They just don't know. Harry should keep well away. He's not wanted and um, he certainly won't be on the top of Prince William's list to talk to because he'll ramble on about himself. He probably might go in and, and think I've got a story here somehow and I can sell this to make X money and Meghan will be pleased. The stress that Harry has caused over the last few years, has that contributed to the health crisis engulfing the royal family? It's interesting to reflect on whether you think that Harry would be self-aware enough to be thinking about what impact he might have had on this family. And the royals have never looked more vulnerable and Harry has to accept that he played a part in that. As all this played out, Harry was not the only rogue royal. Do you regret the whole friendship with Epstein? Um, uh, now, uh, still not. The scandal saw Prince Andrew withdrawn from public life, accused of having underage sex with a minor, named in court, dropped from patronages, the Duke of York's reputation in ruins. The York brand is toxic. Andrew, though he's not been found guilty of anything, is in disgrace, as everybody knows. There is absolutely no way that Prince Andrew is going to be making a comeback to public life. They might be a bit thin on the ground, they might be short-staffed at the moment, but there is no way that we are going to see the Duke of York. It all piles immense pressure on Charles to return to public life and hope in Australia of a royal tour from the King and Queen later in the year. 
I think he, if, were, if he were asked today, would say, yes, I will be in Australia later this year. Ultimately, though, that is not his final decision. That is going to depend on the advice of his doctors. I think he's very ready to get to Australia. He's always been given a very warm welcome when he has been there. And I think he's aware that so long after his accession, certainly months on from his coronation, he needs to be there. The Australian people want to see the, the head of state. I think we'll see him go to Victoria because, of course, when someone's gone through cancer, they'll be thinking about their life and what it means to them. I wouldn't be surprised if he went. We know he went to Geelong for school at Timbertops. But despite the controversies, the setbacks, the scandals, and worst of all, the battles with cancer, the House of Windsor is far from finished. The royal family fighting back. Certainly, it's been an extraordinary few weeks. There needs to be a period of uh, unity. There's been so much said and written and speculation online that these medical diagnoses are signifying the end of the British monarchy, that this is a monarchy in crisis. It's absolute nonsense. The British monarchy is the most respected and loved throughout the world. This has really just cemented the role of the monarchy in the public mind and the public affection. A very special place in the heart of British people and also throughout the Commonwealth and in the wider world. Even without the Queen being there, the pieces will be picked up, put back together and monarchy will continue. Total survivors. Look what they've gone through over the years. Abdications, the Queen's 1992 Annus Horribilis. This is a family that endures, but more to the point, it's an institution that endures.